Since the ongoing civil war began in 2011, more than one million Syrians have been killed or injured. Over half the country's population has been forced to abandon their homes, making Syria the largest displacement crisis in the world. Extreme violence, indiscriminate bombings, and limited access to resources have forced many families to risk their lives to cross into neighboring countries, such as Iraq. This is Domi's camp in the Kurdistan region of northern Iraq, where more than 40,000 registered Syrian refugees are living with limited access to resources, facing an uncertain future. My name is Mashallah. I am a Kurd from Syria. I am the mother of four and I am married. I am originally from Derek, but I grew up in Damascus. My home is Damascus. There was war everywhere. The fighting was about 15 minutes away from us, and we could hear the sounds of gunfire and explosions. Some nights the sound of explosions would wake us up, and the children were frightened. We had to go to the ground floor to calm them down. We made no preparations. I thought we couldn't get out of Syria. We didn't think that one day Syria would be ruined like this. When we used to see news of war in other regions, we felt pity for the people there. We didn't think that one day others would feel pity for us. We never thought one day we would be trapped in a war. I remember for a month I was packing our bags. One day there would be less fighting and I would say to myself, we won't go. Another day the war would be intense and I would say, we have to go, we must leave tomorrow. When we left, we didn't know we would end up at a refugee camp. When we got here, our relief and happiness turned into sadness. I never thought we would stay at a camp without water or food and in such hot weather. I couldn't believe it. These things caused my children and I to get sick in the first month we were here. My children got diarrhea and felt ill. They were drenched in sweat. There was no water to bathe them. Sometimes we had to stand in lines under the hot sun to receive distribution items. I remember once I was in a line with my son. 
His cheeks turned red with sunburn. We had to stay there for an hour. There were old people in the line and some of them fainted. We poured water on their faces. We were exhausted. The only thing we could do was console each other. People were so frustrated. They were fighting with each other. It was a very difficult time. Well, now I am working for Doctors Without Borders as a health promoter within the camp. We speak to people about our free medical services, teach them about different health issues, and help them cope with their problems. Honestly, I'm so happy that I have this job. It has helped me forget many of my bad memories and pain, because it leaves me no time to think about the past. I work from dawn until dusk. Then I return home and I take care of my children and the housework. I have no time to think. Also, I am making money for my family and can pay for our living expenses. I was happy to get this job. We needed it desperately. We spent all the money we had on the way from Syria to Iraq. We didn't know what to expect. For example, when one of our children would get sick, we would take a taxi and they would charge us double the normal fare. Honestly, I am so happy that I have this job. Come, honey, come and have your breakfast. I should go to school. Come, honey, have your breakfast. I should go soon. Good morning. Good morning. All the problems in the camp are of the same nature. For example, there was a lady cutting in line and I told her to go back to wait in line. She said, leave me alone. I haven't earned a living for eight months. My husband is jobless. I will wait here until it's my turn. People constantly struggle with the cost of water and essentials. She said she'd had no water and the power had been cut for 10 days. These are basic needs. These are the problems in the camp. The people who come to visit us here in the camp notice straight away the problems of power cuts and water shortages. These are daily issues, our most basic needs. These are the things people around the world never have to think about. We have problems. We have shortages. Is it possible for someone to not have electricity day and night? Can someone go without a shower and live with no water for 10 days? I mean, water is so important in life. The people are helpless. What should they do? They have no choice. Honestly, we have gradually become accustomed to life here. We have no choice. We have to either adapt ourselves or return to Syria. We can't return to Syria because of our children. Our belongings in Damascus were all stolen. There are no jobs and there's still war. So we can't go back. We have to stay here and adapt ourselves. 